what would you expect the mean to do? 28. What would you expect the standard deviation to do? <coughs> now you got to be careful not to just go back and do 4 times 3.24 because you might have some decimal places that didn't round up before, and now that they're four larger, it's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make an educated guess here that that one's going to go to four times, that's 12, 13 point something, okay? I'll miss it, just to miss it. And I'll miss it three times just to miss it, just so you can see. It's probably not going to be exactly the same thing each time. So notice that that 13.6 was my guess, that 12.96. 12.96 just happens to be exactly what happened when I multiplied by four, but I can't promise that because I don't know how many decimal places were out there that I lost in that transition of the problem, okay? And now they say, so in this distribution, <clears throat> the mean's five and the standard deviation is two. Draw a conclusion about how the mean and standard deviation are gonna change if each number is multiplied by the same number. So why don't you multiply each number in the original distribution by? What did you do by two to get eight? Same thing from four to 16? Same thing for five to 20? Same thing for six to 24? Same thing from eight to 32? So you did a common multiplication problem of four. What do you expect to happen to the mean? Your small numbers, the mean was five. What do you expect to happen to the mean now? What did you do to each of these numbers to get to here? Up here, when you multiplied by four, what did it do to the mean? Okay, I give up. I give up. You've already packed up your brains and want to leave. Maybe I'm making it too easy. Maybe I'm making it too difficult. Now, what do you expect the standard deviation to be? The mean and standard deviation were five and two respectively. So the mean was five, the standard deviation was two. If everything got four times as large, what happened to the standard deviation? He got four times as large, so it better be eight as well. The last problem, the one that's the ugliest one, because you've got to look at a graphic and you have to make those pictures big and you have to actually read what's going on because this green area represents two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below the mean. So you have to be able to estimate what the standard deviation values are going to be out of there. And that's kind of a challenge because you don't have a real big grid out here. They do give you a little bit of leeway out there, but if there's one you're going to miss, this would be the one to miss because it's not the type of problem we're going to give you on a test. We're not going to give you a graphic and expect you to interpret that graphic without giving you a little bit more information. We're going to be ugly to you. We're going to make you crunch numbers. So you've seen the exercises and you've seen that there's nothing in there that you should, that you should be frightened about, right? So I could say that this is due for you on Wednesday, but I'm not going to.